greetings to all and uh, sundry, my people of uh, Ambazonia, my people of uh, the Southern Cameroons, the brief warriors of our liberation movement, accept liberation greetings from me, Comrade John Akuro, this uh, 30th day of December 2023. And uh, <clears throat> today is uh, Saturday. December 30 and so we are just uh, one day to go to 2024 and uh, 2024 a lot of us a lot of our people say is a decision year so um, in the course of 2023 we have already given La Republic of Cameroon a lot of nose bleeding uh, the people of La Republic of Cameroon and their agents across the southern Cameroons are really in a lot of financial difficulties. That's exactly what we had wanted to achieve. And uh, although we are yet to get to the point where they really will have to start scampering on top speed out of our country, but we are gradually getting there. And uh, I really must congratulate uh, our folks in the diaspora who have been shipping to the Douala Seaport in La Republic du Cameroon, a good number of you, a good number of them have reached out to me, have called me and told me no more. We really have come to the consciousness that we have to stop this so that we stifle that economy, so that we make it difficult for La Republic to get the, I mean, the military equipment and the, the means to continue to kill our people uh, so that we get them out of our territory the fastest possible. So I really want to hail these folks. They are all over the world, in the United States of America, in Asia, in Western Europe, and the others. And those of you who are persisting in this, you better look for other options and let's all persevere and sacrifice and kick La Republic du Cameroon out of our territory. I also received calls from quite some folks who were already intent on buying land in the Republic of Cameroon, especially Yaoundé and Douala, because they felt that, oh, they could explore some business opportunities, like they claim, make some money, help I, uh, IDPs out there by lodging them out there. But they've come also to the consciousness that continuing to do such is helping the Republic of Cameroon, putting wind in their sails to enable them to continue to hold tight on our territory. Whereas in 2024, we need to do everything to fast track their departure from our territory. And so that's very laudable uh, efforts and commitments too on the side of those folks who have now realized it makes sense by land in Victoria, by land in Bamenda, by land in Kumba, by land in other places where we can continue to make life pleasant for our people and avoid bombing resources into La Republic of Cameroon. And, uh, also, I'm glad that uh, some of our business folks uh, on the ground in the Southern Cameroons have reached out to me to make serious confessions about serious challenges they have had on their way to exploding, to making, uh, you know, to making it, to making money, because La Republic du Cameroon constantly put them on a disadvantaged position because they fear that if any of our people become rich, and independent, they might contribute in kicking them out of our territory. They've confessed to this quite a lot. And I've had testimonies, uh, some that I may eventually have to play here when I get clearance from the people, regarding the situation with Cancun and the Union Bank of Cameroon and the attitude of Mr. Musa Shameful. I mean, some of the people get very harrowing tales of what a high hand Mr. Musa Shameful uses to cow them down with assistance sometimes from the B of La Republic du Cameroon and is not uh, you know been uh, been uh, you know selfish with using the instances the government instances of La Republic du Cameroon to maintain himself as a president of Cancun for life and a good lot of them also say they now fear so seriously for the savings of the local masses that are lodged in credit unions affiliated to Cancun. And so I will still use this opportunity to call on our people, to send a clarion call on our people to make sure, make sure you 
or come together and take back your credit union from the hands of La Republic Cameroon Saparashiks, who constitute Musa Shame for and his gang. This is something that is urgent and very important. We can't let them continue to destroy us. They have done already so much and it is time for them to stop. So, <clears throat> if you are just joining in, you are welcome to this uh, broadcast. It's six minutes gone past 9 p.m. in Furawa, exactly six minutes gone past uh, 9 p.m. in Ebamut. And so, I'll be extending regards to, uh, <laughs> to our people in Muyuka, in Yoke, to our people in Modele, to our people in Benakuma. Aha. Someone is indicating to me that she also say hello to the people of Bull Road in Menchun. Of course, hello to you all out there. And I should also be saying hello to the people of Mbekong in Lower Bafut and uh, my people of uh, Ambazonia. Even if I've not said hello to you out there in Akwaya or in Tenako, know that I have everyone at heart, including you who are responding in Manyemen or Badun. Of course, I extend regards to everyone. And so, as we are jettisoning into the new year, we must continue to stand firm, firm, firm to make sure we attain our objective. I take time off to read comments and uh, I'd like to thank those of you who take time to leave your comments. Sometimes there are criticisms meant to improve the way we do things to improve this education exercise. Sometimes there are criticisms simply meant to insult when it's criticism meant to insult, sometimes I ask, I ask uh, YouTube to take it out. And uh, if it's just a personal insult to me and all of those things, okay, no problem. I don't really give it a damn. Sometimes that criticism meant to be vicious. And so I don't pay a lot of attention to that. So someone said yesterday that shouting doesn't put across a point. It means yesterday I got somehow emotional to the point where I really came across as shouting or perhaps I was really shouting. Sometimes it's draining really draining to find those who call themselves uh, intellectuals trying to manipulate people this openly but i'm sure i mean that comment did, did touch me well it made a lot of sense and i think i'll be able to work towards uh, moderating uh, my tone to make sure i don't come across as shouting and again thank you for all of those comments so please share 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 and share let us get as many folks together as possible so that um, we finish up this stuff with Maurice Canto. Also, quite so much uh, in store. So, while you're sharing and while we have other folks joining, I had this flyer and I call this absolute provocation. Ben Deka is an iconic artist in La Republic du Cameroon. Of course, while we were there, we celebrated Ben Deka. We danced to his beautiful airs. We admired Ben Decker and even his sister, Grace Decker, I think his sisters, Grace Decker and Dora Decker. And so those are guys that we said were really good. Those Dwala guys, they were very good musicians. I mean, we still listen to their music even until today. But because this is culture, culture has no boundaries. But there is an issue that I pick here with Ben Decker and a lot of the artists in La Republic du Cameroon. We saw with the war in Côte d'Ivoire, the civil war in Côte d'Ivoire that went on for years, we saw artists, musicians come out and sing for peace. They came out and sang to condemn the evils of either the terrorists who were coming or those that were calling terrorists at the time of calling from, from the uh, northern parts from Burkina Faso to condemn the government when it was not also doing right and to condemn the atrocities being meted out by the regimes on the people and called on the warring factions to come together and talk peace. We heard musicians devote soundtrack after soundtrack to that, to the sake of bringing peace in their country, to the sake of ensuring societal justice, to the sake of ensuring that the human person should be treated with dignity. We saw the dear Jogba, the dear Jogba, a world-class footballer who played his trade in Europe. The dear Jogba, 
What's a household name? Or is still even a household name in football. But DJ Drogba devoted his time, his attention, and part of his career fighting to bring peace and justice to the people of Cote d'Ivoire. DJ Drogba used his influence, used his charisma, used, I mean, the position that he had for the sake of humanity to ensure that justice and peace will reign in his country. Didier Drogba had the opportunity to play in the palace with either Laurent Gbagbo or eventually with uh, Alassane Draman or Terra. But Didier Drogba chose to stand on the side of the people. But with the people of La Republique du Cameroon, we have seen Samuel Etofis go to Victoria, to Limbe, and mock at us by saying, uh, je mange du soya à Limbe, sans garde de corps. But there were bees all around him. That was a mockery, an insult to the people of the southern Cameroons who are facing a genocide being unleashed on our people by the government of La République du Cameroon. And Eto Samuel has never missed any opportunity to dine and wine with the Bia government and even campaigned for such a sanguinous government in La République du Cameroon. We have seen Ngannou Jumesi, or what I, I beg you, pardon that, we call him Jumesi. Ngannou, of course, I, had that clip, I have that clip somewhere, I pass it here. Ngannou, who yesterday passed through the desert, went through horrible situations. He could have died on the, uh, on the high seas, fighting to get to Europe to change his life. But the same Ngannou has now simply forgotten where he is coming from, forgotten what he had gone through, and does some fake kind of modesty by going to sit and eat puff puff and beans and give the impression that showing that is remaining simple whereas he already has already taken the side of the deadly blood-sucking government of Mr. Paul Bia we have seen Ganu Jume, uh, what on Ganu? I beg your pardon um, I have seen Ganu being used by Frank Bia to promote his ambition to become the next president of La Republic of Cameroon we have seen Ganu now being used by uh, Chantal Bia and the governing class to promote the perpetration of the Bia system, of the Sanguinous system in La Republic du Cameroon. But now that doesn't really concern me, that concerns La Republic du Cameroon. What concerns me today is this finger that Ben Deka and this gang of musicians with him are trying to poke into the eyes of the people of the Southern Cameroons. Is it not already enough that Ben Deka has never stood up even for one second to condemn the atrocities of the government of La Republic du Cameroon, of the evil forces, the talks, Mr. Paul Bia's talks in La Republic du Cameroon. Is it not enough that neither Ben Deca nor his sister Grace nor his sister Dora have ever stood up to condemn these atrocities? When Bebe Branditato was murdered in cold blood in Bermenda, you expected people like Ben Deca on the other side if they continue to claim that we haven't won people to rise up and say no this is not going it shall not fly no he didn't when bebe carol louise was shot dead in a car with her mother driving her to school in boya ben deka stayed mute when the homes of our people were being reduced to ashes with over 450 village settlements burned and human beings vulnerable burnt inside, never heard the voice of Bendeka. When children, babies, and a pregnant woman were killed in the most brutal manner and burnt alive in Gabu, we never heard from Bendeka. Never. We never heard from Bendeka. Folks, when Sam Sawyer was taken, a lame person, a handicap, put down and slaughtered and peeled, decapitated. That is, they took time off to skin him alive on motion pictures. Ben Deka said nothing. Ben Deka has never coughed. Today, Ben Deka emerges from nowhere and says he's going to stage a concert. Musicians of Ben Deka's uh, uh, magnitude don't do tea time because tea time is what you get at midday at 12. 
Because this show you see is meant to be at 12 on January 1, 2024 in Kumba. January 1 will be the Independence Day of La Republic du Cameroon. Of course, I'll expect Bendeka to play tea time in Douala, in Yaoundé, in wherever. That's not my business. But Bendeka knows that January 1 is a Monday. It's a ghost town day in Ambazonia, in the southern Cameroons. And that the people, right from the clergy, the business class, the youths, everyone decided we will not shut down our ghost towns to celebrate because it is wartime. Because we are facing a genocide. Because we need to get an invading and marauding force out of our territory. Because we need to get a, an evil colonial administration out of our land. It is that day that Ben Dekar chooses to come for a show in Kumba. Listen, folks. This, there's no mistake about this. Bendeka knows that his presence in Kumba on the 1st of January is definitely going to lead to bloodshed. Bendeka knows. Can you tell me the last time that any governor anywhere in the Republic of Cameroon sat to cheer a concert by local musicians named which day, when, the last time it happened. But you see this one? They say it's going to be under the auspices of the colonial governor of the Southwest, Okalia Bilai Bernard. So you now understand that this is a full-blown regime orchestration for bloodshed. They want us to start the new year shedding the blood that seeing our people die in good numbers in Kumba. That has been the lot of Okalia Bilai Bernard who refers to our people as dogs. Don't think that Okalia Bilai Bernard is coming uh, in good. No. Don't think Okalia Bilai Bernard is coming in peace in Kumba. No. Okalia Bilai Bernard is that one who calls us dogs. Okalia Bilai Bernard is that one who only comes out when he's coming out for bloodshed. Okalia Bilai Bernard cannot come to give you a cadeau. I'm using this opportunity to call on our people in Kumba. Don't fall to this trap. Don't fall to this trap. And I'm sending this sound message to Bendeka. Mr. Bendeka, no. Anyone who dies in Kumba as a result of your passage in Kumba, the blood will be on your head and on the head of your children and generations of your people to come, Mr. Bendeka. Because you know Clearly, what you are going to do in Kumba. You know, Ben Deka, that what you are going to do in Kumba is to go and cause death. Otherwise, you won't accept to be part of this kind of venture. And this is one more opportunity, one more sound message to the people of Ambazonia, to the people of the Southern Cameroons, that the citizens of La Republic du Cameroon in good numbers have never ever liked our gods. They never like it when we are quiet, when we are calm. In their, in their minds and eyes, we are objects. Otherwise, Bendeka will not go on such an expedition. Bendeka knows exactly what happened when Wan Shinarambo, uh, a Nigerian uh, actor, went to Bermuda against all kinds of advice. And people warned him your presence there could lead to unfortunate uh, situations. And it came to pass. Bendeka knows saying he's going to Kumba will lead to an outright confrontation with the self-defense volunteers and the murderous forces of the Republic of Cameroon, and who are going to pay the price, the unarmed civilians whom Bendeka is luring by this particular concert to their untimely death. Watch out, my people, and be careful. That said, I want to leave Bendeka and uh, immediately go to Maurice Camto and continue where we ended yesterday. So, folks, recall, yesterday, Maurice Camto talked about the plebiscite, and I said that uh, his hanging on the plebiscite was because he has the feeling 
that too often we really don't have an idea exactly I mean what some of those terms mean and what some of those consultations stand for and I said here and I'm reiterating here you can see this from Webster's that the plebiscite is simply the manifestation of an intention a plebiscite you can look at that uh, definition as I'm sharing out there so that we are all on the same page we never let anyone try to play a fast one on us by you know getting to things we don't that uh, they think we don't understand that a plebiscite is a vote by which the people of an entire country or district express an opinion for or against a proposal for or against a proposal especially on a choice of government or ruler so now look at this so on 11 february 1961 the plebiscite was meant for people to express an opinion to a proposal and the proposal was that when we are chief independence we join with either la republic du cameroon or with nigeria and of course our people voted that upon achieving independence we will join la republic du cameroon i recall i said yesterday that the reason there was a vote at the united nations on on uh, april 1 1961 was because the united nations expected us as a trust territory that was put under british mandate to prepare us for independence and that we will therefore in joining in any form or shape with la republic du cameroon will have to sign a treaty of union and only independent states signed a treaty of union and so that is why there was a vote let's now move on with maurice canto again <laughs> Et donc, le, 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 le Southern Cameroon, sous d'ailleurs la conduite du KNDP, du KNDP, du docteur John Goufoncha et euh, euh, Mouna euh, Augustine Gomjua, par opposition, n'est-ce pas, au docteur Ndele, qui votait pour le rattachement au Nigeria, vote pour le rattachement au Cameroun. Et donc, le 1er euh, octobre 2060, euh, 1961, on fera le rattachement, mais après la conférence de Fouman. Pourquoi je dis que ce serait long Parce qu'il faut maintenant aller dans la conférence de Fouman. Voir ce qui s'est décidé. Now, you see, like I said yesterday, and I'm picking up from there, Maurice Campton, when he talks about this referendum, or rather this uh, plebiscite, and he calls it referendum, it's actually plebiscite, and then he skips straight to uh, October 1 before heading back to Fouman, the one thing he tries to is trying to do here is to give the impression, therefore, like I said yesterday, that after the plebiscite, I mean, we as a people simply had to sink into La Republic du Cameroon. That we simply had to sink. If we simply had to sink into La Republic du Cameroon, there therefore would never have been a vote at the United Nations on April 1, 1961. And don't forget. Because I said yesterday and someone asked, and I have come back here today with uh, Dakama's jobs, with uh, Clement Z uh, Zablowski's statement, he made clear, when you find what uh, Clement Zablowski says, he does not mince his words. When he says very neatly that the United States of America, what he says, the United States of America, that the United States congratulates the people of the Southern Cameroons for their accession to auto, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, to auto determination, as it constitutes the will of the population who wants to run its affairs democratically. Listen, this was in 1961, and this was after this vote in April. But before that, in 1959, when this idea of independence by joining was first couched in 1959. When this idea of independence by joining was first brought up, the same Zablowski said regarding a unification, he said, the results of a hurry choice imposed on the population of the trust territory would be catastrophic for their political future. 
This was Clement Zablowski. And so I think Maurice Camto will not tell us that he understands what was happening at the United Nations at the time better than the actors who were present. He will not tell us that he understands better what actually the United, why actually the United Nations set to operate the way they operated better than uh, late Clement Zablowski. Clement Zablowski was not a fool. To stand from nowhere and say, I am congratulating the people of the Southern Cameroons for their accession to auto-determination. This is something really fundamental that we need to note. Because with respect to the rape of the Southern Cameroons, there was so much that came into play. And I reiterated this yesterday. Maurice came to himself, admits it. A mandate is meant to be executed. There is no instrument that the United Nations took at any time to alter the mandate that was given to the British government, which was notably to prepare the people of the Southern Cameroons for self-determination, for independence. Let's now get into the nitty gritties of the football conference as seen by Maurice Camto. Et là, les discussions, parce que très souvent, nos frères disent, oui, mais la conférence de Fouma, non, nous a trompés. Bon, si on vous a trompé, bon, c'est la faute du trompeur, mais c'est votre faute aussi. Did you hear what he said? And this is strange. Coming from someone, I mean, coming from someone who says he wants to be president of a country, coming from someone who is trying to position himself as that one who is better placed as president of La Republic du Cameroon to address the situation of the Southern Cameroons. You heard the mockery he made there that our people have often said we were duped in Fumban. And he says, if we were duped, it was our fault. That's why you hear the people are laughing. Says, yeah, if people were duped, it's your fault. You are duped. Swallow it. Shocking, right? I'm saying this, taking time to go through this because some of our folks easily get deceived when you hear people claim, oh, they're sympathizing with you for your cause, they're sympathizing with us because of what we are going through. Like Maurice Camto come and claim that, oh, he was not going for elections, the, uh, the uh, local elections that uh, his party did not go, that's parliamentary and council elections, because uh, there is a war ongoing in Amazonia. And so as long as that war is not, uh, you know, straightened out and all of those things, he will not go for elections. And so and our people say, oh no, Kanto is the only person who really thinks, no. I like that when you listen to Kanto here, you understand that Maurice Kanto did not go for elections because he knew that the elections had already been played and that he had already been, uh, elected, been duped at the polls and that he was going to come away from there with nothing. He simply used the Southern Cameroons, the ongoing genocide, in the southern Cameroons as a subterfuge to mask the real reason he was not going for elections. And so nobody should ever be duped again. Because right here, this is Maurice Camto unraveling. Let's listen to him again. Oui. Donc, à la conférence de Fumban, en fait, le problème, c'est quoi? C'est qu'il y avait eu plusieurs conférences avant. Bouéa, Bamenda, je crois même Yaoundé, si je me trompe. Et donc, la conférence de Fumban, contrairement à ce que les gens pensent, n'était pas l'unique conférence. Et là où nos frères anglophones ont raison sur un point, c'était qu'il fallait leur donner le projet de constitution avant, pour qu'ils travaillent dessus avant de se rendre à la conférence de Fumba. Now, after mocking at us, he recognizes exactly where the issue started. And I want to say this, folks, don't ever forget this too. Because each time I talk about these things, I must recognize, I must point out that we found ourselves in even this kind of situation where we are today. Forced to be arguing, forced to be explaining, forced to be analyzing. Because the British government, the British government decided to treat the people of the Southern Cameroon as goods, as objects, as animals. That they could just trade out the way they wanted. And so because the British people had traded, had traded us out, just like they were trading slaves in the 16th century, just like they were trading slaves. That's how the British people traded us. 
The British people, the, the, the idea of you know treating people as slaves had not gone out of the head of the British government at the time. The British crown quietly decided to treat us as slaves to the French. And therefore, while the government of the already independent La Republique du Cameroon, Ahijo and others, were benefiting from the expertise of French officials, officials from France, who were everywhere at all those conferences, including in Fumba, the British were simply absent and allowed our people just by themselves to our destiny. This must be noted. And that's why you hear when Kanto admits to one thing here, that's a trick that the French have always played on all their colonies. They made sure that at the Fumban Constitutional Conference, they never provided the draft constitution, the working document, to the Southern Cameroon's delegation as required weeks or months in advance. They only presented the Moses document while they were already in Fumban. At least on that point, Maurice Cantu recognizes that it, it, that it was wrong. But that, although it was wrong, it's not so fundamentally wrong. Because take note, that draft document, that constitution they were working on, was a constitution of La République du Cameroon. That was brought just for a few amendments to be made to accommodate their new bullocks, their new slaves into their union as a first step. That's what it is. Now let's hear again how it unraveled. Mais à Fumban, c'est à Fumban, c'est quand la délégation euh, de, de, de nos frères anglophones du Southern Cameroon sont arrivés qu'on leur a remis le projet de constitution. Ils devaient donc l'examiner séance tenante. L'histoire veut d'ailleurs, et c'est pour cela que j'ai toujours considéré, à mes yeux c'est un grand homme, aux yeux de nos frères qui veulent, surtout ceux qui veulent la sécession, c'est pratiquement un traître. John Gou Foncha, la, 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 la réunification a eu lieu grâce à Foncha. Parce que Foncha a dit, la délégation anglophone a dit, non, de toute façon, on suspend la conférence, nous allons rentrer hein, pour étudier le projet de constitution. Il a dit, non, 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 mes frères, on était des frères. Now, so you get back to this. You understand why Mr. John Gou Foncha will later on even want to kill himself because as Kanto is saying, for La Republique du Cameroon, John Gou Foncha is a hero. And for the people of the Southern Cameroons, he is a traitor. Because as he says, that it is thanks to John Gou Foncha that we ended up where we are today. That that unification happened the way it happened. That we were duped in Fumba. That's what he says. Thanks to John Gou Foncha. Because he says, the total delegation members from the Southern Cameroons decided we are not going to continue with this conference. You have handed us a working document only here. We will take it back and take a look at it, study it carefully, and then come back at another time so that we should be able to examine this document. And he says that John Bull Foncha told them, no, 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 you can't go. We are already here. Let's just uh, sit down to look at this document. But don't forget that there's another account that claimed that Mr. John Bull Foncha even had this document already and uh, decided not to share it with the other people. And you will hear come to see right ahead here that a lot of our people at the time cooperated in getting us to where we are today because they were promised political positions. They had political positions. They had political gains for doing that. Of course, it's not different from what we are seeing today. We have people who are seated there with La Republic du Cameroon coming on television and telling us every day about the head of state's policy vision and claiming that the Southern Cameroons had even never been independent. Of course, that the Southern Cameroon had never had, uh, you know, there was no such thing that we simply had to sink into La Republique du Cameroon, all because that helped them to get positions within the government of La Republique du Cameroon. If you are doubting, listen to this other parrot. The British said you are going to achieve independence either A by joining your former your brothers of uh, 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 East Cameroon who had become independent in 1960 or two by joining the Federation of Nigeria. The then Southern Cameroons was given two options. The British said you are going to achieve independence either A by joining your former your brothers of uh, 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 East Cameroon, who had become independent in 1960, 
or two by joining the Federation of Nigeria. Then... Now, you see, you understand, this is uh, Joseph John Gute, of course. Uh, I was uh, looking at uh, a post where they said that uh, the, the uh, government official of the Republic of Cameroon who will be handing the flag to the La Republic of Cameroon football team in uh, Cote d'Ivoire this January is going to be um, the director of uh, the civil cabinet of La Republic du Cameroon. And I saw a post by uh, one of the bloggers saying the prime minister is honestly, finally, and after everything is said and done, just a figure head, just un figurant, just un fair valoir. That's from the TGV. You see, I'm just saying that in passing because to imagine that Joseph John Gute, you call him doctor, Joseph John Gute, I don't know if he has also acquired his own professor, because once you're a doctor, like the community camera, as soon as you get an appointment into the government, the next day you become professor. So I don't know what is going to acquire his own professor. That somebody, to the status of John Gute, will sit here and narrate this kind of inanity when he knows very well the events of April 21, 1961, and that the government of La Republic du Cameroon can only lay claims or have some proprietorship by any chance on the territory of the Southern Cameroons by signing a treaty of union with the people of the Southern Cameroons. Anything short of that is an excision. And that is illegal. That is against international law. As we will see right ahead. That is against international law. Because at independence in 1961 and on January 1, the boundaries of the Republic of Cameroon were frozen. Maurice Campton himself admits that when the Republic of Cameroon was independent on 1st January 1960, the Southern Cameroons was not part of their territory. Maurice Canto also knows because he used the maps of the Southern Cameroons to fight for La Republic du Cameroon for the ownership of the Bakasi Peninsula. Because the Southern Cameroons has international boundaries. The Southern Cameroons has international boundaries. And I know John Gute is aware of this. That the, South, the international boundaries of the Southern Cameroons are clearly demarcated. And John Gute was already in government. When La Republique du Cameroon in 2010 was celebrating 50 years of its independence, received a delegation from the United Nations Secretary General and they handed to Paul Bia two maps. Two maps. One map represented La Republique du Cameroon and the other map represented the Southern Cameroons. That was a clear reminder to Mr. Paul Bia to the effect that the independence being celebrated in that 2010 was that of La Republique du Cameroon had nothing to do with the Southern Cameroons. You will recall, if you were watching television, CRTV at the time, George Ewane made this commentary about the two maps and stated one was for the Southern Cameroons and the other one was for La Republique du Cameroon. And that report was immediately ordered, removed by the presidency of La Republique du Cameroon. These are things that should not elude us. And so when you find parrots, like John Gute and all the other so-called intellectuals from the Southern Cameroons. Pushing through these fallacies, it is for personal gains, as we here come to confirm, right here. I'm not the one saying it's... Avant que les Anglais, les autres viennent nous séparer, on est venu ici nous re retrouver entre frères les affaires de contenu de la Constitution. Là, on va voir après. Voilà comment c'est arrivé. Et c'est pour cela que c'est une loi ce qu'on appelle la constitution de 1961, la constitution fédérale, et là aussi les anglophones ont raison, est simplement une modification de la constitution de 1960, de la République du Cameroun, qui devient la constitution fédérale. So did you hear that? That's why I'm talking here of annexation. And Maurice Cantor confirms this. So he says that the document they were working on was simply a modification of the 1960 constitution of la République du Cameroun. So in the mind of La Republique du Cameroon, 
they were simply annexing the southern Cameroons. And that's why Maurice Camteau will tell you many times, the Cameroon had a Jaffes on his toit. Maurice Camteau will be unable to explain to us that it is not annexation when he will be unable to tell me why we went there from by bringing two different states together, the Republic of Cameroon and the Southern Cameroons, together to form the Federal Republic of Cameroon. And then in 1972, when they organized the so-called referendum we were talking about in the GFI, it became the United Republic of Cameroon. How then did we find ourselves with La Republic du Cameroon that is in existence now? What happened to the Southern Cameroons? You see, it's easy to think you can deceive a people, but facts are facts and they don't lie. Et donc, on instaure de cette façon-là le fédéralisme au Cameroun avec un premier ministre du Cameroun occidental, un premier ministre du Cameroun oriental et un gouvernement fédéral. Je vais sauter parce que... Après, on, en 72, qu'est-ce qui se passe On dit c'est trop lourd. Mais en réalité, la suppression du fédéralisme était déjà à l'œuvre lorsque, dès 1966, Amadou Aïdjo décide de faire un parti unique. Parce que le système... Now, this is another thing. They say in Fiji, I went to read sweet too much. Chief Mango laughed for Banda. Because you see, Maurice Camto is so relaxed, so excited with the cheers and everything, and the wah 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 wah. And so he begins to vomit certain things that in normal circumstances you have time to think he won't say. Because look at this. While John Gu Foncha, I mean, in his statements, in, uh, uh, in some outbursts, expressed that the Federation collapsed way back in 1962 already. And the people of La Republic of Cameroon tried to claim that, oh no, it was our people who overwhelmingly wanted uh, a collapse of the federal system for a more unified system. He admits that Ahijo already with his high hand, still within the federal system, where there are two separate states, equal in status, in 1966, decides to impose the unique thought, the unique party on everyone. And people were forced to shut down their political parties and be forced to join uh, Amadou Aijo's Union Cameroonese which will eventually become Union Nationale du, du Cameroon, the UNC party, or the CNU, as our people eventually called it. Take note that by 1966, La République du Cameroon had already taken over our entire police force. By 1966, La République du Cameroon's gendarmes were stationed all over our territory. By 1966, the military, La République du Cameroon's military was all over our territory. So Southern Cameroonians owned nothing no police, no gendarmes, and no military. And don't forget, the, the, the police force was introduced into La Republic du Cameroon by the Southern Cameroons. And they took it over, and from that time until today, no Southern Cameroonians have ever manned the police force. They made sure they all controlled the military, the police force, and the gendarmerie. So their will was simply imposed on our people. I want us to take note of this very carefully. Don't see that some point and think that, oh, the people were consulted and they accepted. The people did not have a choice. Because you recall that the late Professor Bernard Nsokika Fonlon, in publications already from 1962, 63, they started asking questions. Where are we headed? Where is this union headed? And don't forget that from Goji Dinka started ag ag agitations way back in 1966. I like that we all know all of this so that it gets clearer and clearer in our minds that what Mr. Kamto is trying to pass across as if we're a willing horse, willingly participating and willingly cooperating with our own assimilation and annihilation. And mind you, Paul Beer, the president of La Republic of Cameroon, himself pressed by Mo Ibrahim in a live interview in France, made clear that the ambition was to assimilate, was to swallow the people of the Southern Cameroons, but they failed. He admitted. So I don't know what sophistry Maurice Camto is trying to play here, but let's listen again 
I'm taking time to break this down just so that we are all on the same page as we move on. Fédéral, ça commande quand même un peu difficilement du parti uni. Et donc les différents partis qui existaient dans le pays vont fusionner pour ne faire qu'un parti, l'UNC, l'Union nationale camerounaise. Donc on était déjà en réalité en train de sortir, sans le dire très clairement, politiquement du système fédéral. Mais je dois dire, et c'est là que je vais dire à mes frères anglophones, parlons avec sincérité, parce que tout cela s'est fait aussi avec votre participation. Les leaders politiques de la région aussi se sont confrontés et il y a eu des choix. Lorsque il y a eu certains qui avaient des réserves, d'autres étaient favorables, même à la création du parti unique. Et ont eu effectivement des promotions politiques grâce à cette prise de position là. Can you hear that? He admits, he admits, he admits to blame that while there were quite some people who opposed even the return to the unique party system, the 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 creation of a unique party system, and opposed even talks about you know destroying the federal or canceling the federal form of the state, there were others who cooperated and who cooperated very well and who were very favorable for this and who ended up getting political promotions. Did you hear that? Who ended up getting promotions, political compensation for doing just that. That is why you will recall that a lot of people have attacked Solomon Tandem Muna specifically. Because don't forget, because Joa was seriously in opposition to the kind of things that Ahijo was doing, like the unique party system, like eventually, uh, you know, cancelling the federal form of the state and all of those things, because all of those things were already in the books. Ahijo simply did what? Fired Joa and appointed Solomon Tande Muna. Don't forget, while in the southern Cameroons, Prime ministers were elected. Solomon Tande Muna was appointed. He was appointed by Ahijo. And that's why you hear people have said over and over that Muna was a sellout. Of course, uh, Barrister Akere Muna wouldn't argue this point because Maurice Kanto is raising just it. And the Barrister Akere Muna, of course, is also with the, with the uh, MRC. So I suppose that still sharing that same that same philosophy that's why you see people people have continually you know the mooners have continually faced a lot of difficulties emerging politically in the southern cameroons because people have considered that dynasty a sellout and this is the same thing that is definitely going to be transposed to the mukete family because we heard of the inform, infamous acts of inform mukete while he was sitting in the senate swearing that uh, you know some people in the southern cameroon cheated others and that the entire southern cameroon can never exist again as a whole as it was before of course going by what maurice Kamto says he had long been compensated with the position of senator and so when he passed immediately his son who took over from him is senator so you see exactly how a uh, few people often for selfish political ambitions, for selfish reasons, mortgage the future of entire communities, of an entire country like Ambazoni. So he is now establishing to us that according to him, we shouldn't complain because people among us took benefits, got positions, got gratified for ensuring that we got tight where we are today. What do you do, Maurice? Et en 1972, quand on dit on va faire l'État unitaire, Aïjo était très malin, très intelligent, ou ses conseillers, j'en sais strictement rien. Mais toujours, est-il qu'il a compris une chose L'article 47 de la Constitution disait qu'on ne peut pas modifier la forme fédérale de l'État. Donc là aussi, les anglophones ont raison. C'est exact. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il a fait Il n'est pas passé par l'Assemblée. Il a fait le référendum. Oh, le référendum veut dire que tu retournes devant le souverain. Now, Maurice Kamtoto admits that although the federal constitution 
was simply a modification of the constitution of La Republic du Cameroon. It had a clause, and that clause was Article 47, which was very, very clear. It did not mean words. And I have that Article 47 here. I took this wider part so that you can read it clearly because there's another part that I took, just the small section, which is not too clear, but you can read it here very clearly what Article 47 of that constitution says. Because Article 47, which is on the revision on the constitution. So Article 47 does not forbid the revision of the federal constitution. It doesn't. But the, that is, uh, I beg you, pardon, Title 10 does not forbid the revision of the constitution. Of course, every constitution in the world gets revised. But Article 47 had a specific rule, and it was very clear. He said, any proposal for the revision of the present constitution, which impairs the unity and integrity of the federation, shall be inadmissible. Look, and this Article 47 is not just clear, but just too clear. I mean, it says that any such proposal shall be inadmissible. It does not go further down to say anything, to give any circumstances under which Article 47 can be modified. Look at it. Because Article 47 Sub B says, the power to initiate the revision of the Constitution shall belong equally to the President of the Federal Republic after consultation with the Prime Ministers of the Federated States and uh, the Deputies of the Federal Assembly. That's what it says. That's for any other aspect of the Constitution. There is, when you read all of this, write down. I read the next one. Any proposal for the revision submitted by the deputies must be signed by at least one third of the members of the Federal Assembly. Proposals for the revision shall be adopted by simple majority vote. That is uh, uh, sub C. Uh, that proposal for the revision shall be adopted by simple majority vote of the members of the Federal Assembly, provided that such majority includes a majority of the representatives in the Federal Assembly of each of the Federated States. And then the last one says the President of the Federal Republic may request under the same conditions as for a federal law that a second reading be given to a law revisiting the Constitution. Why did I read all these aspects of Article 47, all the subs? Because there is no provision that gives a condition under which the federal form of the state can be modified. It simply said it will be inadmissible. Because in some circumstances in, 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 in the body of law, they say it shall be inadmissible. But under such and such circumstances, it can be looked into, but it simply said will be inadmissible. That word is clear and speaks for itself. So that simple clause, Article 47, Sub A of the federal constitution simply invalidates any so-called referendum. So that makes the 1972 referendum illegal. I mean illegal. Because it was clear. The constitution did not give any condition under which the federal form of the state would be modified. But Maurice Camto, the sophist that he is, tries to make us to understand how it could have been possible. Just listen to him. Le souverain peut changer son avis. Il l'avait dit qu'on ne touchera jamais à la forme de l'État. Maintenant, il dit qu'on peut toucher. C'est ça. Did you hear that? He says, le souverain peut changer son avis. The sovereign here is referring to the people. That they had said before that we cannot change the form of the state. Now they have said we can change. How did the proposal come about? Because they said, the, the constitution says that any proposal is inadmissible. Inadmissible. So therefore, if any proposal is inadmissible, how did the proposal come in the first place before you start saying that the sovereign? And now, let's get to the nitty gritties of even that particular uh, refer uh, uh, referendum. 
let's admit that it was necessary to go to a referendum. Let's listen to Camto again and we'll come out on this. Voilà tout, la, le, tout le problème vient de là parce qu'il y a une interprétation différente entre nos frères et sœurs anglophones et les juristes, enfin un certain nombre de juristes, y compris moi-même sur ce point. Vous dites que le peuple est souverain, c'est pas ça Donc le peuple est souverain et il utilise sa souveraineté quand il veut, comme il veut. C'est pour cela que a, sinon il n'y aurait pas de différence entre la procédure législative et la procédure référendaire. Vous allez au référendum parce que vous retournez devant le souverain. Lui qui peut annuler ce qu'il a décidé hier. Donc, tout est parti de là, puisque vous avez voulu que je parle de cela. Et je crois que nous devons un jour. So my people, that is the end of what I'll be taking from Maurice Camto, but this is the most important part of what he said, I mean, for this broadcast of today. Listen, he says the people are sovereign. And therefore, if you take it before the people and the sovereign people decide, where is the problem? Now, Maurice Camto knows where the problem is. Maurice Camto, he's a very intelligent fellow. And that's why I say what he's doing is an exercise in sophistry. Maurice Campton knows where the problem is, even at this point. Granted that we were already in some kind of independence by joining with La Republic du Cameroon. Granted that we accepted the federal system and had moved into it. Granted that our people were betrayed by some among us to accept uh, the, the unification of all political parties into a unique dot. But there is an issue with this referendum. Granted, that our people even accepted to go for a referendum. The biggest problem with the referendum are the electorate. Why was Article 47 placed in the Constitution in the first place? Listen, folks, and this is where it is very important. No text, no pronouncement is ever made in a body of text like us the constitution of a country innocently. It is put there for a purpose. Article 47 of the constitution was meant to protect the federal form of the state because it protects the minority. Do you understand that? So Article 47 was meant to protect the minority people of the Southern Cameroons that got into a union with La République du Cameroon fake union though, of two states equal in status. Where would the equality exist if the people of the Southern Cameroon simply sink into a unitary state with 80% of the population and they represent just 20%? That was the import of Article 47. And so if Article 47 has to be touched, the people who should be consulted are the people protected by it. That is law. I'm not inventing. This is law. I'm not even just talking fact. This is law. I'm not talking logic. But if you use even logic, it will get to the same place. But this is law. So it comes, therefore, to the fact that if the referendum of 1972, May 20, had to have a place, that referendum had to be conducted in the southern Cameroons alone. The people who had to vote, who needed to be consulted, were the people of the southern Cameroon. Because when you bring the people of the Republic to Cameroon, it's 80%, and the people of the Southern Cameroon, 20%, and you say, come and decide whether you, the bigger ones, should just swallow the smaller ones into your system. Are the results not reached from the point go? Of course. The results are known from the start. So that referendum was not only illegal, it was a smoke screen, and that is political banditry. And Maurice Campton knows this. That is why you know, my people. I like to talk with examples. The people of Quebec, the people of Quebec in Canada have already been consulted twice. Why did the referendum that took place, the, two, the referendum that took place in Canada not involve all Canadians as to whether Quebec should achieve self-determination? No. The result will be known in advance. That is why at each 
each of those referenda, they consulted only the people of Quebec. It's only the people of Quebec who voted. And if anyone is coming up, it will be only the people of Quebec. Maurice Camto knows this. Elvis Golan Golan knows this. John Gute knows this. Atanga Ponji knows this. Fu Jonathan Mujing, they know this. All of them, Fukalistus Gentry, they all know this. They know these native regions. And let me tell you, folks, that is why you notice that in 2017, when the consortium started by requesting a return to the two state federation, La République du Cameroon criminalized any talk of federalism. It was a crime. That's why people are in jail, even today, as I speak, for propagating federalist ideologies. And I've explained on this platform why, at some point, La République du Cameroon stopped criminalizing talks of federalism. Because they use people like Munzu, who knows these facts very well. Munzu, Simon Munzu, who knows these things that I'm explaining very well. They use people like him to try to water down the quest of the people for total self-determination by claiming there can be some kind of return to some kind of federation. Our people changed course. Even the consortium that started with this on February 9, 2017, through the voice of Pawil Fetasang, their cause to total self-determination, to absolute independence. And of course, we have seen our people have upheld this day in, day out. You see, the people of Canada respect the Quebecois and they treat them well. That's why the Quebecois, on two occasions, they had a chance to decide whether to remain part of Canada as a federated state or become fully independent. They voted to stay. It were only Quebecois who voted because they were treated in, in the union, because they don't find themselves, you know, messed up, because they don't find themselves marginalized, dehumanized, because they don't find themselves being treated as slaves. We don't want to have anything again to do with like the Cameroon because of fellows like Camto. Yeah, who take us for fools, who think that we are so dull to the point where we can't understand the difference between being dribbled, being used, being duped, and then willingly getting into something. Mr. Kanto, I'd like us to have a debate on law, on the constitutionality or the legality of even just that referendum. Because in the plebiscite of 1961, is facing a lot of legality challenges. Because the British had a mandate to prepare Southern Cameroons for independence, not for independence by joining Abel, not to start asking us to get into any kind of federation with anyone. So that referendum of 1972 was not only illegal, it was as it was as not only unconstitutional, not only illegal, it was just as stupid as the decree that Paul Bia signed in 1984, changing the name of the country from the United Republic of Cameroon back to the Republic of Cameroon. And when people started screaming about it, because don't forget that the very venerated, very venerated from Godi Dinka took advantage of that immediately and went ahead to ask the Mezam High Court to declare any form of union with La Republic du Cameroon invalid because La Republic du Cameroon has seceded from the union by simply returning to its name of the Republic of Cameroon. La Republic du Cameroon edited itself out of any union with the Southern Cameroons. Even if that union were illegal, but language the Cameroon edited itself out. And this is something Mr. Camto needs to confront. Because how do we go from Un Republic of Cameroon to Federal Republic of Cameroon, United Republic of Cameroon, then return to Republic of Cameroon without creating issues? And when people shouted at, at the top, 
what happened in 1972 was reenacted in 1995 when the late Honorable Ihims Jacob Anne ran from table to table at the National Assembly, the Cameroon National Assembly, begging the Francophone parliamentarians to vote that the name of the country should go back to be United Republic of Cameroon because they didn't know what to tell their people what had happened to Southern Cameroons when they now call the country Republic of Cameroon. All 35 members of parliament at the time, from what was called Northwest and Southwest in 1995, were confronted with the vote at the National Assembly where Paul Bia discovered that by taking a decree in 1984, it was absolute illegality. He decided to legitimize it to parliament. And went now to parliament. And in parliament, don't forget, out of 180 members of parliament, 180 members of parliament, only 35 are from Southern Cameroons. So you have a whooping 145 from La République du Cameroon. And then they come in here, they say, let us vote whether the name of the country should uh, remain as Paul Bia has signed by decree, Republic of Cameroon, or it should be United Republic of Cameroon. Folks, we have faced this nonsense a lot. We have taken just too much of it. Maurice Campton knows that all of these things are political drugery. And folks, this is the Maurice Campton you should know. Not the one that pretends around and claims that, oh, I will not do this because uh, these things are going on in Southern Cameroon. Oh, I will not do this. No. No. This is the Maurice Campton you should know. And you should know, therefore, that there is not a single citizen of La Republique du Cameroon who will stand to protect our interests better than us. And that all those poor just political apparatchiks, like the John Wooters, the Ngolengole Edvis, the um, Callistus Full Gentry, the Enung Paul Chairs, the uh, Atanga Paul G, I hate even calling that one, all of them, the food, the, uh, food, the, the food, Jonathan, Mujin, all of those people, all of them, all of them, including all those so called ones called the senators, there's even the other one they call her Mama, who, um, Regina Mundi, all of them, those are people who are sending us out, who sold us out before, they know this fact, and who are until today determined, they even at their ages. They will make sure they bury us in slavery like we do the Cameroon before the day transition. That's a simple wickedness, folks. But we will continue to stand up to it. So uh, I will end here. We are already at uh, almost uh, 10 minutes, gone past, uh, <laughs> gone past uh, 10 p.m. in Bamenda, Kumba, and Boya. So we will end it here. And uh, I will be back here tomorrow, the 31st, with now an international perspective, an international response to these ugly words, to this sophistry from Maurice Camto. So please make sure to tune in here tomorrow. I'll make it earlier tomorrow. I'll make it earlier so that, uh, and that will be 6 p.m. Amber time. So that people should be able to watch this and then we have time to go do the countdown for the crossover into 2024. So that said, I want to thank each and uh, every one of you for being on this platform today. And as always, folks, let us share, 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 share and share as much as you can. Let's ensure that, uh, I mean, a good majority of our people should have this knowledge. A good majority of our people should know exactly what is going on. Knowledge is power. When you know, you will know how to defend yourself. To God and to Him alone be all the glory.